anytime we have an encounter, a genuine encounter with the living God, if we are unaffected, there's something wrong with us. So how are you at Jeopardy? Oh, I'm not as good as I want to be. Oh, well, that's too bad because we're going to play a round oh, boy. of Jeopardy. All right. The category is yeah. classic rock and roll. Oh, my. Okay. A reminder that your answers must be in the form of a question. Okay. Are you ready to play? I think I have the question. <laughs> Who is Led Zeppelin? No. Oh! <laughs> here's, uh, here's the first answer. <laughs> Of the 40 greatest Led Zeppelin songs of all time, ah. <laughs> this song was ranked second best by Rolling Stone magazine in an article from 2019. Okay. What is Stairway to Heaven? That is correct. Yes. Second question in the category <laughs> classic rock and roll. <laughs> On January 23rd, 1991, radio station KLSK in Albuquerque, New Mexico, played this song for 24 hours straight to inaugurate the station's format change to classic rock. Okay. Uh, what is Stairway to Heaven? That is correct. <laughs> Question number three in the category, <laughs> classic rock and roll. In 1982, televangelist Paul Crouch went on a crusade against this classic rock song, suggesting that when played backwards, it was filled with satanic messages. What is Stairway to Heaven? That is correct. <laughs> and to finish the category, this classic rock song is written in the key of A minor and opens with arpeggiated finger-picked guitar chord progression <laughs> with a chromatic descending bass line of A, G sharp, G, F sharp, and F. <laughs> I know nothing about that, but I'm gonna guess an answer or a question what is Stairway to Heaven? Ding, 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 ding. That is correct. <laughs> you sure know your classic rock and, rock and roll. I, that's amazing. Now, I think that there is actually a, a rumor. It's like a old wives' tale yeah. that music stores refuse to allow people to play the riff from Stairway to oh. Heaven when they're testing out guitars. Oh, okay, that could I, be. I think, it's, I think it's not actually true, but there's a lot of uh, internet memes and things like this I where see. the guitar manager comes out and says, no, no. Yeah, it puts a stop you know, to it right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that is Senior Pastor Scott Burkle. He is the Senior Pastor of East White Oak Bible Church. Of course, my name is Alex Trebek. <laughs> 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 ah. No, nope, I'm Treg Whitaker. I hope not, because he's been gone for a little while and did <laughs> not come back from sabbatical. Rest, rest in peace, Alex. <laughs> uh, and this is the Ask Scott podcast. So some of our um, viewers might be asking the question, what is all that business about Stairway to Heaven? Well, obviously, you were preaching from Genesis chapter 28 uh, yes. this week, mm -hmm. and it's the Stairway to Heaven passage, yes. or Jacob's dream, or Jacob's ladder. That's where you were yeah. uh, this Sunday. And it sparked a few questions. Sure. Shall we answer them? Oh, let's go. For All it. right, let's get into it. First question. Where do we find reasons for joy in this text of scripture? Yeah, I, I have to tell you, I actually asked Trig to ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> little that was little my peek question. Be, peek behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> because there's so much joy here. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing about the Bible is that all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful. There's profit in every portion of Scripture. There are some chapters of the Bible that advance the story of the Bible uh, in a way more significant way than other chapters. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those. Okay, so that's one reason for joy is that we're at a, a text that's really advancing the story of the, of the Bible. We're talking about, uh, by story, I mean the idea that God created the world, that human beings are fallen and broken, that God is sending a redeemer to redeem us from our uh, condemned plight, and that God is going to renew all of creation, bring us to a place of glory. And he's going to do that uh, by having a man whom he blesses into a family that becomes a nation that, that from that nation comes a savior 
through whom there would be a blessing to the nations. Mm -hmm. And so this story advances, or what happens in chapter 28 of Genesis advances that story by making Jacob the heir of the promise of God and God appearing to Jacob in this dream. We also see in the passage the beholds, the mm. can you believe it? Can you believe it? A stairway, a word that's used only once in the Bible, uh, right here, and sometimes translated stairway, sometimes translated ladder, but there's a, there's a portal. Earth and heaven, although they are, for most of us, far removed, we can't, don't ever sense the other dimension. Uh, there's a portal, there's a conduit, there's a, a way of reaching one or the other. Can you believe it? Mm. A stairway. Yeah. Second, can you believe it? Angels. Angels are uh, servants of God. They minister before the Lord, but they are also, the word me angel means messenger. They are also sent to this earth. They, they go back and forth in the portal. And Jacob in his dream sees these angels, these amazing beings, uh, warriors, heavenly warriors going up and down in this ladder, which signifies the idea of God's engagement in his realm of heaven and in the realm he's created earth and back and forth. Then behold God. Can you believe it? God shows up. And then behold grace. I'm with you and I'm going to watch over you and keep you. I'm going to bring you back to this land, the promises of God. So there's this unbelievable revelation of God in the chapter. And then you have grace. Uh, Jacob doesn't deserve any of this. He's a deceiver. He's on the run. And God just pours it out. Then there's Jesus' use of this text in John chapter 1, where he says to Nathaniel, you'll see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending. It's going to be our experience. And he uses the word you, plural. So it's not just for Nathaniel. It's for God's people to experience. And then of course, it, I didn't get to this in the message, but if you look at the places in the Bible where people witness this conduit, this portal between heaven and earth, you see Daniel in Daniel chapter 7 sees the Ancient of Days. Ezekiel, these wheels spinning around. Uh, uh, John, a rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. And then at the very end of the Bible, we have the new Jerusalem descending out of heaven to earth. Now the dwelling place of God is with people and he will be their God. I, I, how can you not be joyous over all of this? It's just a, a, a wonderful thing to hear in this chapter, see this advance of this story mm -hmm. of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You referenced how, a little bit about Jacob's character. Yeah. Um, a deceiver, yeah. you know, and uh, he had lied to his dad, Isaac. Mm -hmm. um, he had swindled his brother. Yep. Um, and yet we pick up the story here in Genesis chapter 28. And as Isaac is sending Jacob off to find a wife, mm -hmm. he blesses him. Yes. Knowing, knowing Jacob's character, yes. <laughs> that he had lied to his yeah. dad and he had mm -hmm. swindled his brother. It mm -hmm. seems strange that he would pass on a blessing in those circumstances. Mm. Why? Well, he'd already formally given the blessing to him, even though it was deceived. And I think that Isaac, you'll remember, had been foretold that the younger would serve the older. Mm -hmm. And so I think maybe in his processing of his own encounters with God, he's reflecting on that and has come to some conclusions that is almost like a... a I don't know that it's, I think it's more than resignation, okay? I don't think he's just resigned to the fact that this is how it's going to be, but I think now he's actually, well, this is what's going to be. I'm going to make the, I'm going to do the best I can to make this a blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we face that in life too, don't we? Where we come to a place where we have to recognize, well, this is the reality. Now I could either just fight against it or I could just be resigned to it or I could help it be a blessing. Yeah. And I think he's gone to that third plan. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank yeah. you for texting it. Yeah. Uh, uh, you may not know that uh, questions that are text to ask Scott mm 
yep. at 77411 is one of the ways we get our questions yes. for the Ask Scott podcast. That's Here's right. another one that we text, texted to us uh, okay. yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, Isaac really wanted Jacob to be sure not to marry a Canaanite woman. Yes. Um, so he was sending them off to Uncle Laban, you know, far away yep. uh, among another people. Yep. And uh, what was the significance of um, Isaac's wife or Jacob's wife not being a Canaanite? Yeah. So Abraham was insistent that Isaac not get a wife from among the Canaanites. And Isaac is likewise, uh, and Rebecca both, are insistent that Jacob not get a wife from among the Canaanites. Uh, and the reason is because of that's the culture they're living in, and they do not want this family to get synchronized into just becoming Canaanite. And you're going to see this all through Genesis, the threat of this family becoming amalgamated into Canaanite culture and religion. It would take me longer than we have time for to describe the horrors of the Canaanite world and the Canaanite religion, but let's just leave it at this. It was highly sexualized and evil and had to do with child sacrifice and Mm -hmm. all manner of bad things. Mm -hmm. And that does not mean that where uh, Isaac and Rebekah were sending Jacob was to a pure place where everybody lived in peace and light. Right. But they at least acknowledged that the Lord existed. Mm. Okay. Now, he existed as one among other gods, (laughs) but... They at least acknowledged that. And they weren't part of the existing culture, so there was no threat of Jacob being amalgamated into that culture and coming back to the land. It wasn't going to happen. Okay. So Jacob heads off on this trip. Yes. uh, To find Uncle Laban. Right. Right. And uh, he has this dream. Yep. Um, I wonder what the place of dreams and visions is in the life of a Christian, does the Lord still use dreams and visions? Yeah. Um, I my answer is a qualified one. Um, what we have to recognize is that not every dream is revelation, mm-hmm. and so we should be tested everything against Scripture. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that we should exclude the possibility. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, for example. There are many people in the Middle East who have, by virtue of their exposure to the gospel through uh, oh, trans world radio, things like that, the internet, they've heard the gospel and then they'll have a dream that in some way confirms that what they are hearing, this is the truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, or they have a dream that gets them on a search where they find something like Transworld Radio or the internet that introduces them to the gospel. It goes both directions. Uh, And I don't discount the possibility of God doing that. (laughs) At the same time, I would say that we should never depend upon such a thing. Mm. Uh, Dreams are still in that realm of the we don't know category. Yeah. Even among secular psychologists, there's whole avenues of research. What's going on when you dream? You know, mm-hmm. In some ways, uh, some of the studies suggest that it's the way in which our subconscious is processing the realities of what's going on in our day-to-day life. But some of our dreams are so unusual that I'm not sure that we could take that as mm-hmm. like, that's the answer to all dreams. Mm-hmm. Certainly not to this one. And then I think we can also recognize that there are some dreams that God induces, and that's one that happens here, right? And to try to sort out which ones are which requires the help that we have from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the responses that uh, Jacob has to his dream and his experience with the Lord is an awe. Yes. He was afraid. He was, I think, the word that you used, I think, was overwhelmed. I feel like it was emotional. It was, yes. it was stirring for him. Very much so. And I, I was, uh, honestly, I was brought up uh, in a context, in a Christian context, where we were a little skeptical of those Christians that were mm-hmm. emotional, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. We wanted to steer away from okay. yeah. emotions. Yeah. Uh, but maybe there's a, 
proper balance? Help us with yeah. the emotional response yeah. to the Lord. Some of it's personality driven. Um, some of us are more emotional than others. Uh, some of it is our backgrounds and how we're raised. But I think that anytime we have an encounter, a genuine encounter with the living God, if we are unaffected, there's something wrong with us. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong in how we're responding. Jacob is not unaffected by his encounter with the living God. And I think that the thing we take away from this is that when we have encounters with God, whether it's in his word or in our day-to-day -day lives, it would be very valuable for us not to be unaffected by it, yeah. but rather to allow it to uh, engage our whole self, uh, including our emotions. Yeah. Uh, the danger, I suppose, is that uh, when churches try and manipulate a situation in order to stir yeah. emotions yeah. Uh, apart from even the truth sometimes right 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 and that can be it that can be a danger you know it's interesting because the spirit of god does what he wants to mm. right he blows jesus said he, it's like the wind blows where he wants to go and sometimes uh in church where you have a taste of it mm -hmm. you think oh we want more of that what did we do to make that happen let's do more of that yeah and that becomes a manipulation uh and uh uh, sometimes we don't get what we want and we feel disappointed. So then we feel like, well, then we got to figure out how to, con you know, how do we manufacture this? Uh, I've had experiences, for example, we have two services, at East White Oak, and where in the first service we have this amazing encounter with God. And I'm talk to our worship leaders, I go, what just happened there? Mm -hmm. and we don't know, you know. And then we go to the second service and it doesn't happen. Right. And we do it, did virtually the same things. Mm -hmm. um, and what we have to recognize is that we're not, we're not in charge of trying to find that, mm -hmm. whatever that. I, I would say it's the, uh, a, a special awareness of the presence of God. Uh, that's not our job. Mm -hmm. Our job is to present the Word of God and let the Spirit of God do His work. Mm -hmm. uh, another response that uh, Jacob has to his experience with the Lord is a vow, a pledge yes. to a tenth of every future... Right. Um, asset of, of yeah. his. Yeah. Uh, is this where we get the idea of the, the tithe? Well, that comes before that. Uh, Genesis 14, Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth. Uh, and so I think that there's some precedent that probably lives on in the family legacy there. Um, I don't think that uh, uh, we need to keep it, we need to keep distinct uh, in terms of our interpretation of Scripture, what is descriptive and what is prescriptive. This is describing something. It is not prescribing something. Hmm. It's not saying, hey, Jacob gave a tenth. Now you'd better get... There's no comment in the Scripture that says, and this is why we all mm -hmm. should do this. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. It's a description. Having said that, even in the descriptions of the Bible, we can find principles... Okay, so for example, uh, Jacob says, all that you give me. You know, well, he knows that it all belongs to God, 100%, right? Yeah. Uh, of all that you give me, I give a tenth. You know? um, so he's recognizing some principles there. God owns it all, mm -hmm. right? He also recognizes that as a response to this amazing encounter with God, he needs to have some tangible way of being able to respond in worship and one way to do that is through our material uh, substance that the Lord has blessed us with. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you Scott yep. and thank you for texting your questions to 77411. Just text, text, text ask Scott to 77411. We'll do our best to say that yes. and to answer your questions the next time we were together. Uh, you can find the Ask Scott podcast on our YouTube channel that is at East White Oak or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We look forward to you joining us the next time when Pastor Scott will once again answer your questions about the Bible on the Ask Scott podcast. And welcome back. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>